Uh, so I wanted to bring a, a Christmas message today. And so I started to think about Christmas, and I said, you know, what, what better way, man, than to finish off the year than with the Christmas story, with the greatest gift. You know, right now, guys, I mean, you know, you know, there's a lot of hurting people, hopeless situations that are taking place due to all this that pandemic that took place and, and uncertainty and, and so forth. But let me tell you, and there's a, so there's a lot of hopeless uh, people, but it, it's awesome to be able to bring the greatest gift, guys, which is Jesus Christ, the one who gives hope when there's no hope, right? The one who brings faith when there's fear, right? The one who brings help when there's hurt. I mean, it's an awesome way to finish off the year. I know we got one more week, but we're at the end of the month, guys. 2020 is almost, we're going to say goodbye to it. And we're going into a new year, but it's a great way to finish the, the year by bringing a message of Jesus and the birth of Jesus. Um, but check this out. So today, guys, it's pretty interesting. This is the way God speaks, and he ministers to me, and, and I give it to you. Today's message, guys, I'm going to go quick here. So it's, it's almost a message that's going to be like bittersweet, guys. Okay, it's bittersweet. So it's going to sting a little bit, but then it's going to soothe a little bit. Okay, uh, and so I like to say, you know, as Christians, guys, so as Christians, you know, we can't never shy away from truth, guys. Okay, we, we got to speak the truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Come on, somebody. We have to. We have to. And I've learned in my own life, I've learned that i rather get, you know, if, if that hurt can help me, I want to hear it. I've learned. I mean, maybe at the beginning it wasn't so, right? Like, hey, what are you telling me? What's going on? What, what's your problem? And, you know, like, you know, because truth hurts sometimes, guys. And it stings a little bit. Like, ay, ooh, ah. And it, you know, and, but I've learned that if that hurt, that truth is going to set me free, I need to hear it. I need to hear it. I know that Juan also mentioned to me, uh, about a certain incident that he took place in his worst one, oh, his company. I like what he said. He said in his company, he said that another company, well, the, he does landscaping in lawn service, but that a company had come, uh, or not a company had come, that person that he was working for hired another company. And Juan said this, he said, okay, it's cool, but let me know if I did something wrong. So that the, the reason you're going to hire a bigger company is because they wanted to do more, you know, bigger stuff. And, the, of course, bigger companies can do more and so forth. But he wanted to know if he did something wrong because he wanted to be able to fix himself so down the road he can continue to prosper. And I like that. And that's what it's about, guys. Truth will set us free. Truth will help us, improve us, and so forth. So I really want to... Uh, mention this and let you prepare you okay for for the message this morning because it is gonna maybe like oh, I don't understand and I don't know if that can really help me and what is this how is it gonna profit me and so forth but anyway let, let's open up our Bibles to Matthew chapter 1 we're gonna read verse 18 through 25 let me have a Jesus and an amen that you got it Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 25. <clears throat> All right, the, read, the word of God reads in this form. It says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child by the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done, that it may be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. 
which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he called his name Jesus. Jesus. Amen. So the title of my message this morning, guys, is that the price can, cannot be compared or doesn't compare to the prize. The price doesn't compare to the prize. Uh, it's, it's awesome, guys, that we can, God here, guys, is going to use Mary and Joseph, the parents of Jesus, to show us a little bit about the prize, you know, about following Jesus. So when I speak about the prize or the price on following Jesus, I need just to understand about salvation first of all. And know, know, guys, that when it comes to salvation, there was a price paid, okay? But the price has nothing to do with you and me. The price, he paid it on the cross of Calvary. When he died on the cross, guys, he gave us a ticket to heaven, okay? He came to save us from our sins, which we're going to talk about that at the end as well. But that's, he paid that price, and, and no one can pay the price. There's nothing that you and I can do to enter into heaven. He paid it. He's perfect. He became the perfect lamb that was slain for our sins, the Bible says. So he paid the ultimate price with his life. Now, when it comes to coming to Christ and, and giving our life to Christ and saying, Yes, Jesus, I want you to forgive me my sins. I want you to set me free. I, I want to live for you. God then desires much more than just that experience of salvation. It's beautiful. I'm saved. Something happened. But God wants us now to continue to follow him. Because as we follow him, we continue to prosper in him. You hear what I'm saying, church? Like the first experience that I have of salvation was so beautiful, guys. So beautiful. I say it all the time. It's like, it seemed like, man, I never saw the tree so beautiful. I never heard the birds sing so beautiful. It was amazing, amazing. I was like, wow, life, life. I felt, I felt reborn. And, and it was a beautiful experience, but it, it's not just there. That's the first step. And that's, you know, coming to him. But second is the continual, the following him, guys. This is what has brought me to this place now where I'm here now preaching to you. Because I desire to follow him. I didn't want to do my thing no more. I didn't want to live my life no more. I wanted to live for him. And I started to follow him. And God will take you, as the Bible says, from glory to glory, guys. That's his word, guys. The Bible says that we're not the head. I mean, we're not the tail. We're the head. We're blessed coming in, blessed going out, blessed in the city, blessed in the country. We're, this is his word, but we have to follow him. It's, it's the decision to follow him. And, you know, again, as we see here, guys, Martha, uh, uh, Mary, and Joseph, you know, we, sometimes we, we say Peter, James, and John maybe were the first disciples uh, that, that he called out. And, and that's somewhat the truth, but I think also, guys, it, it was Mary and Joseph that were the first disciples. Because what they did here, guys, they desired to follow Jesus. And, and you're going to see it as I break it down. They followed Jesus, and this following, guys, now this following, apart from salvation, this following now comes with a price. Okay, and that's my first point, guys, for those who are taking notes. It, the first Thing that you need to understand to follow Jesus has a price, guys. So if we look into this story, guys, um, let me just share with you a little bit of what's happening here. The Bible says that Joseph betrothed uh, uh, Mary. So there's a, there's a Jewish tradition, guys, or a Jewish custom at that time that was called Kudishun, okay? And this is where a young man would get, with his fiance, would get betrothed or betrothed to, to his wife, in this case, Mary, Joseph to Mary. And, and we can say legally they were married, guys, okay? This, this condition, condition is, is a marriage, we can say. But, but for one year, for one year, they couldn't live together, and therefore they couldn't sleep together, though they were married. Okay, wow, that's crazy, right? How does that work? 
Nobody else gets it, but it was crazy. So they could, they were married, guys. That's, that's the betrothed, the, the betroth, right, of, of Mary and Joseph. They, they were, for one year, they were legally married. That's why he says that he wanted to divorce her, okay, because they were legally married. But this, this, this ceremony, this tradition, they couldn't sleep or live together for a whole year. So let me, let me give you a little bit more in, insight into this. So, so what happened also, guys, is the, the, the groom's parents, what they would do, guys, the groom's parents, they would pay high, high price to, to the bride's family for the bride. So it was all really arranged, guys, and, and really the, the kids didn't have a say-so. Can you imagine that, Timo? <laughs> like, we, we would pick for our kids who they would marry, and if I like the girl... I'll go and I'll pay high dollar for that girl to marry my son. That's, that's the tradition, guys. And that's what was happening here. Okay? So check this out. This makes a little bit more sense about the one year. So, for example, I, <laughs> we're going to use Kayla. Uh, I, I paid high money for Kayla for Jeremy. Uh, <laughs> sorry. But the one year that they couldn't sleep and, and, and uh, live together was, was for purification. So what this means is that I'm paying a lot of money, and I want a pure girl for my, 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 my son. In other words, you know, that one year would let me know if she's pregnant from somebody else or not. That was the idea, guys. I want somebody pure for my son. So I'm going to pay, but for one year, you can't have, I want to see, because if you come out pregnant, okay, this is not the one that I want. So it's in this situation, guys, that Joseph and Mary are in, because it hasn't been the year, now all of a sudden, Mary's pregnant. And it's like, Joseph's freaking out because he's not the guy. And it's like, what has happened here? So you need to understand this because this is the situation. This is where it gets hard, guys, because look at now to, for Mary and Joseph to accept this, guys, it, it's hard. And, and that's why in normality, Joseph says, well, let me just, I'm going to, he was cool. He was cool. And I want to get a little bit more into uh, why he was so cool. But he said, Let me, I'm going to divorce her secretly, just on the DL. I don't know nothing, you know. And I'm going to live my life and let her live her life. He was cool with that. And I'm going to let you know why he was cool. And that's a good thing. He was a good guy. But they, they embraced it, guys. They, they said, We're going to follow you, God, with what you want to do. We're going to follow you regardless of this situation. So I want you to see something, guys, because look, at whenever Jesus tells us, okay, and he tells us in Scripture, and he told his disciples on Matthew 16, 24, this is what he tells his disciples. Let's put it up there, brother. Matthew 16, 24. I think that's where it's at. It's not working yet. Oh, man. Have y'all heard what I said? Amen. Okay, guys, so Matthew 16, 24. Look at what Jesus says. He says, then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to follow me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Okay, so this is what he tells his disciples. So, you, again, we say that Peter, James, and John, and, and, and Nathaniel, and all these people are, are the disciples, and they are, and they were. But Joseph and Mary, the price that they're going to have to pay, first of all, is the cross. So let me tell you something, guys. When we, when we, nowadays, when we think about the cross, we have a big cross hanging up here in the, in the top of, you know, the church wall outside. Uh, we wear crosses, right? Sometimes earrings and sometimes a necklace and sometimes we even have a ring with the cross and we wear crosses for fashion. Guys, when Jesus tells these people there that you got to take up your cross, this was like the electric chair, guys. 
This was like the lethal injection. Like, they're going to die. Pick up the cross. That's like, wow. Death. So, don't get scared, guys. <laughs> I told you, it's going to get good. You're going to find out the message is going to, it's good. It's Christmas. <laughs> it's Christmas. <laughs> don't get, uh, but I have to show you the truth. I got to be real with you guys. And I got to be very truthful and very real with you. And some of you are saying, Charlie, I'm leaving this place right now. But look at it. It's going to get good. It's going to get good. So he's talking about death, guys. He's talking about the cross. Like the cross. And, and that's hard. So look at, so I want to show you three things what, what happened with Mary and maybe even with Joseph here of, of dying. So the price that Mary had to take, and, and Joseph in this part, was that they had to die to their reputation. Number one, this chick was un, unfaithful. Okay? And you know what? They're going to know her as being unfaithful. And she committed, you know, fornication or so forth. So if she was a good girl, now because of this, she's the bad girl. And you know how it works, guys. You know, we never really highlight all the good that people do. Some people can live all the good for the rest of their life. And one thing they did, do you know that this young man or this young woman, do you know? It's like, wait a minute, what about all the other good they did? Like, that's out the window. That's the way it is. Mary's reputation is dead, man. It is dead. And let me tell you, for Joseph to say, hey, I'll, I'll bring you in. Joseph, in one sense, saying that that's my son or that's my baby. Again, messing up his reputation. You weren't supposed to have any sex in this one year. You weren't supposed to sleep together. You weren't supposed to live together. And that's your son. Their reputation is out the window, guys. They had, it's dead. It's gone. It's gone. So reputation was one thing. Check this out, guys. For the women, for the women, I think more for the women. And maybe the men, but I think more the women. Her dreams are dead. You know, maybe, maybe she dreamt, man, my, I'm thinking about the big wedding. And I'm thinking about maybe my dad taking me down the aisle. I'm thinking about hanging family and friends and celebration and, and, you know, I don't know. Back in the days, it was the long train, right, tell of the woman, you know, like 25 feet long. Like, what? You know, it She's thinking about that. She's thinking about limo. She's thinking about, and I don't know my little old school because that's back in the days, right? I remember these things. You know, I don't know. Now it's a little more simple perhaps, but, or they don't even, the shirt, like they, they had a lot of material then and now they don't have really no material now. <laughs> like, so it's gone the opposite. But anyway, the dreams, guys, she, she had a dream to get married. Sisters, can y'all relate to this? There is a, this is a big decision. This is a big thing, part of my life. And, and they're dreaming. She's dreaming of something great, guys. And, and, and now that is dead. That is, boom, no, no bueno. It's not good. They're not going to have that no more. You know, instead of a white dress, she's going to have a black dress. Let me tell you something. The last thing that she's, she, she, there was death is, is actually even her physical life, guys. Do you know that legally, guys, because what, what she did, do you know that they could have stoned her to death? It was a law. Any fornication, adultery, guys, they could stone the person to death. Do you remember whenever that, the, the sinful woman they were, was brought to Jesus? And they said, we have caught her in adultery. Do you remember that? And everybody had rocks. Because they were going to stone her, guys. And, of course, Jesus in his wisdom, he says, anyone who doesn't have any sin, be my guest. Throw, throw the first rock. And everyone, little by little, they started dropping the rocks. Because everybody's a sinner. And they couldn't do anything. But. It was legally. They, they could have legally. And that's why I'm saying that, you know, 
um, Joseph was, was cool. He was, you know, that's why he says, I'm going to divorce her, but I'm going to end the deal. Because he knew that he made a big deal of her. They're going to take her into the intercourse and they're going to stone her to death. So he's going to keep it as low as possible and just say, okay, just go over there and do your thing and so forth. So, guys, th th this was the price. This was the price for her. I, I want you to really feel this. There is a price to follow Jesus. Now, when we talk about, we, you know, Matthew 16, 24 says that you got to pick up your cross. So we talked about death. But it also says that you got to deny yourself. So let me just talk to the guys a little bit. So you can imagine, guys. So check this out. First thing is first. Okay, I love, my wife's not here. So I love my wife. She's right here. And, man, you know what? My dad paid high dollar for her. And she's fine. And I like her. And I, I want to be with her. And it's hard because for one year I can't do anything with her. And, and uh, you know, and we're here. And it's good and all that. And so I, I'm going to deny myself this year because of love. And, but now, now, and this might sound a little funny, but I really want you to feel this. But now because she's pregnant and it's a God thing, you know, not only do I have to wait this one year, but now I have to wait another year. What the? <laughs> Denying. Some people, I'm not going to mention no names. Every day, you know what I'm saying? But. Deny for a year, now deny for two years? I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can, I can do that. Are you hearing and understanding? I want you to place you in their, in, their, in, their, in, in their life and their experiences because, you know, I'm not saying that this is all these same things are going to happen to But I'm telling you, there is a price that, you know, if I'm going to follow Christ, you know, there's certain things that, man, I'm going to have to die to. And they're going to hurt at times. I'm telling you, this is the truth of reality of Christianity. He saved me. But let me tell you something. You and I know, guys, you and I know that anybody who has excelled, anybody who has become somebody great, whether it be in Christianity or even in the, in the secular, man, somebody great, they paid a high price to get there. A lot of sacrifice, a lot of suffering. A lot of things that they had to deny themselves, that they had to, you know, uh, die to self. He, they couldn't enjoy themselves with everybody else. Everybody's doing it, but I can't do that because I have a goal and I have something I need to get to. You hear what I'm saying? I'm following something. It comes with the price. You have to understand. God wants great things for you guys. He's preparing them beforehand. That's the way it is. That's why this church is called destiny. Because God has a destiny. Yes, eternal destiny, which is the greatest, but a destiny for you in this world. There is a plan and a purpose that he has for you. He wants to save you, but then he wants you to save other people. And man, I'm telling you, in that route of you saving other people, he'll take you to places. He'll take you to meet other people. He'll take you... Man, to all these things that you never thought you would do. I never, never, never thought I would be doing what I'm doing here. Never. Never. And this is not over. I'm still young. I'm 25, you know. I'm young. Got a lot more years to go. But it comes with the price. Now, you know, I kind of, with all this that I've been saying, I think I'm kind of giving you the insight because I start to think, like, man, God, how, how did Mary and Joseph, how were they able to do this decision? Um, how, I sometimes think, but why, why, God, why would you even come this way? Like, he's going to bring the greatest gift into this world, but he's coming in a weird way. He's causing the price, the pain, the decision on these people. Again, but to a certain degree, it's so that we can understand the pattern and the path to following him. But I, I look at them. They, they were there. They, they couldn't see what we see now. But, 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 but they did see it. And I think this is the key, guys. Because how can somebody give everything for someone or something. Man, when we look at the disciples, guys, so there was 12 disciples, right? Real close disciples. One, of course, betrayed him and hung himself. And from the 11, 10 of them were martyred. 
but one. One was in Patmos, John the, John the Beloved was at Patmos, and he died as an older person. But for the most part, everybody else had died. What causes them to go all the way and give it up and die and deny? What caused Mary and Joseph? And I think for me, th this is the key, guys, is, is that they saw something that other people didn't see. You know, because for some people, and I don't even know you and how, what you're thinking now, and you're saying, like, Charlie, man, I don't know about this then. But these people said yes to it because they saw something. And I think that's the biggest thing. We have to be able to see, guys. Not only hear, but see. And let me give you the, the example. So I have a scripture and I have a little bit more to say. Job chapter 42, verse 5. Let's put it. Hey, man, that was quick. Check this out. This is Job. This is Job. He says, I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear. But now my eyes have seen you. There is a perceiving, guys, of certain truth. They, they knew a truth. They knew something that, that they were understanding. And I think that's where per perception, because they, per they were perceiving, they were understanding. You can hear something and still like, ah, oh, I don't understand. Again, maybe even now, like, man, I don't understand about following God. I, it's too much, and I don't know if I can do this and all that. But when you really start to understand something, your eyes start to open, and you start to say, oh, wait a minute. Now I'm understanding. And let me tell you something. It's good. It's good because if you can't see it, all you're going to see is the price. All you're going to see is the death and the denial, and you're going to see that. And, man, you're going to say, Charlie, man, you're going to get discouraged. Some of you say, you know what, I'm not coming back to this church no more. <laughs> no, I just like, I know y'all will. Y'all love us. Y'all love us. Uh, but you're going to say, I'm not going to, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I want to do this. Or, or you're saying, you know what, it's hard. I know what he's saying. I'm going to call it quits because you're only seeing the price. But when you can see something else, now you can compare and this is where my, my, my whole title, my message comes, guys, that, you know, the price doesn't compare to the prize. I'm seeing the price. I'm seeing something over here that, you know what, even if I have to go through this, even if my dreams are gone, or even if, if they see my reputation as a bad way, I know, I know this is a God thing. I'm seeing something that nobody else is seeing, you see, because the angel... The angel didn't go and say, okay, I'm going to impregnate Mary. And so you know that this baby is from me. The, the angel didn't do that. It was a personal thing and nobody knew. But, but she knew and she saw it and she understood it. And therefore, she was looking at the prize. And I want to give you one quick thing, guys, or three quick things with the prize. And that's my second point, guys. The first was the prize. And the second is the prize, the prize. What did they see? What did they see? And it was more given to Joseph, guys, because Joseph, Mary saw the angel. Mary had the personal experience, and she said, yes, God, yes, here I am. Whatever you want to do in my life, I'm here. Joseph, on the other hand, was the one that bowed me because, like, man, well, I don't know. Was she unfaithful? And I saw Jimmy over there, and I saw Daniel over there. And, hey, what's going on? She was talking to Daniel a lot. And, you know, all these minds, you know, things coming to our thoughts. And it was a struggle, a struggle. But the angel came and spoke to Joseph and gave him three. I'm going to say three things, guys. And this is the prize. This is the prize. And I, they don't, they're not in, in order, but this is the prize. So the first thing that I want to give you is, is the person of Jesus. He says, the one, what, what Mary has is for me. And you're going to name him Jesus. Jesus in Hebrew means uh, God saves, guys. God saves. So salvation. So she, he was going to bring Jesus into this world. And, and this Jesus was going to save humanity. Now, the second one, and I'm going to go back and forth because I want you to really grasp this, is the promise, guys. Okay, the promise. So it's the person of Jesus. That's the price, the person of Jesus. But it, it is also the promise, guys. And so when we look at, at this scripture, what the angel said, guys, he said there was a word that needed to be fulfilled, right? 
And that's in verse 23. He says, Behold, the virgin shall, shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. So we're going to look into Emmanuel in a little bit. That's my third thing. Okay? So it's person, Jesus, promise, and then it is also presence, his presence. Those three things are price, are our prize. So we talked a little bit about the person he means to God's say. So I'm going to talk a little bit about God's promise, and we'll go between both of those two. When we go, this word, this word that needed to be fulfilled, guys, comes all the way from Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. And let's go ahead and put it up there. This is, this is a prophecy, guys. This is 700 years before the angel came and spoke to Mary and Joseph. 700 years. And I want to give you an understanding of all that's happening here. But it says, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. So this is the same thing that an angel spoke. And I want to tell you, the pro actually, the prophet, the prophet Isaiah spoke to King Ahaz. Okay. King Ahaz was at that time on Isaiah. So let me give you a little bit of history. So I want you to really grasp this, and I'll put it all together. And I'm almost done. So King Ahaz, guys, was in trouble. The Syrian army was coming to invade Israel, and they were in trouble. Now, for you who know a little bit of word, King Ahaz was a wicked king. But despite that, God in his mercy said, hey, the Syrian army is not going to do anything to you. You're going to overcome the prophet Isaiah came and gave him this word. And he needed a sign, guys. Okay? He needed a sign. Because that's the thing about God. Sometimes, guys, he knows our heart. He knows what we need. And he'll tell you a word. And he says, I'm going to show you how this word's going to come to pass. I'm, this is going to happen over here. And then you see it happen. It's like, oh, wow. So the sign for Ahaz was that someone in his family, guys, that was a virgin. She was married. She was married, but a virgin was going to conceive. Perhaps at their wedding or whatever. She was going to conceive. And that was going to be the sign for King Ahaz that he would deliver the people of Israel. And exactly the way it, the way it was spoken happened, guys. So that prophetic work was for the present time of King Ahaz over 700 years ago from this passage. But it had a double meaning. Now, let's put this scripture once again back up, guys. Isaiah 7, 14. Look at the, the first word on son, guys, up there. It says, the version of conceive and bear a son. That's an uppercase letter, guys, which is in reference to not just any son, but the son. So, again, though the prophecy was given to him and it took place in the present time of King Ahaz, it was also pointing to many years to come. So, this is the promise, guys. So, again, I'm going to go back to what I'm saying the prize is. It's the promise, but it's also the person of Jesus. So, the promise is that, and I think, I think, I really do believe, guys, because Joseph understood the word. And understood that a prophecy was given many years ago. It's like me. We, I knew a lot of promises. I knew the word. I grew up in church, guys. So I always heard it. I know the word. I know a lot of things that my parents used to say. I was at church. I heard a lot of messages. I always was inconsistent with the word and knowing a lot of the word. These Jewish people, the same way. They, they grew up reading the Torah. They grew up reading the word, the scrolls, and, and church. It's a, so Joseph understood this prophecy. So when the angel came and said, hey, again, on, on Matthew 7, verse 23, he says, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son. They should call his name Emmanuel. He understood of the prophecy seven years ago, 700 years ago, guys, which is a promise that was actually taking place right there and then. And, and he was going to be part of it because he was going to take Mary the vessel that God was going to use to bring forth a child, guys. Are, are, are you grasping what I'm saying, guys? So in other words, he understood the promise, guys, of God. And I think for me, I think that's what really opened his eyes to say, 
oh, yeah, I know. Man, they've been talking about this forever over here. And, man, this is happening. So it made him understand that he needed to take the, the, his wife. And it helped him to understand that it wasn't Jimmy or Danny or anybody else, but that it was God because it was prophetic from seven years, 700 years ago, guys. Are you grasping what I'm saying? So with that said, I just want to bless you as well because right there and then, this also helps. And this is the price, guys, because God is a God, the Bible says, he's not a man or son of man to repent. God is not a man to lie or son of man to repent. If he said it, it shall come to pass. I don't care how long it takes, but it will come to pass. And I, for you and me, you know, people always promise, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. And you know that that's not always the case, guys. But when God says something... It shall come to pass. And I think for me, that's a prize in itself, guys. Because I know that his word, what he says to me, that he's never going to leave me, that he's never going to forsake me, that he's going to be Jehovah Jireh for me, that he's going to be Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Rofi, my healer, my pastor, Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, my banner, the victorious, the victorious one. I know that it's going to be so because he said he would. I see this. This is why it doesn't matter how much I have to die or how much to deny myself. I know he's a promise keeper. He's going to see me through. Everybody will leave me. Father and mother will forsake me. But he will not forsake me. He is a promise keeper, man. And I see the promise there. He understood the promise. And it opened his eyes like, oh, wow. And then the person, guys, so check this out. When it comes to Isaiah, guys, and King Ahaz, it was to save them from a physical enemy, guys, the Syrians. When Jesus is, is coming into this world 2,000 years ago, he was coming to save us, guys, from our sin, from our spiritual sickness, our sin, from ourself. Let me tell you, man, when we're left by ourselves to do our own thing, you're going to get into some trouble. Am I the only one? Come on, somebody. That's why I can't live for myself. I can't, I, Robert Leha can't live. I'll, do, I'll burn this place down. It's crazy. I know me. I don't want to do me. I did me 19 years. And it, it took me to a place I didn't want to be. But he came, again, not for a physical enemy, but for a spiritual enemy. For me, we have three enemies, guys, right? It's me, it's this world that's going in the contrary toward God, and it's Satan himself, guys. We have a spiritual enemy that the Bible speaks about that always opposes you, that says, Charlie, don't go to that church. Charlie, don't hear that little pastor. Charlie, this and this and that. Close. He, he speaks to us, he, you know opposes you coming, opposes you getting close to God, opposes you reading, opposes. So, but he came to save us from all that. Man. The prize, the promise, the person Jesus. Jesus is my savior, man. He saves me from sin. He saves me from my situations, guys. Romans 8, 28 says that all things work out for the best for those who are called according to his purpose and will. Even in the hard times that we don't understand, I know I'm going to win. Because again, he's a promise keeper. But two, I know him. He was, he's the person, he's the savior. He will save me. He will save me. The last thing he said, you shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us, guys. His presence. <sighs> when you go through some stuff and you seem like nobody understands you and you feel like you're alone, he's there. There's not enough money, there's not enough girls or guys, there's not enough anything to help me when I'm going through what I'm going through. But when he's there, everything changes. 
hope arises. Strength comes into play. Psalms, I believe it's 16. Psalm 16, I believe it's verse 11. It says, there is a fullness of joy in the presence of the Lord. This is the reason, guys, that I can die and deny myself because I know that he's with me. And if he's with me, the Bible says, who, who, who can be against me? I'm in a win-win situation here. Guys, Mary and Joseph were able to see the prize. I pray this morning, guys, you know, 2021 is around the corner, man. And I pray that we can go into 21, you know, following Jesus wholeheartedly, man. Knowing and keeping your eyes on the prize instead of on the price. Oh, that God would open your eyes this morning to see that you have more to win, more to gain than to lose, guys. But God has to open your eyes. Let's stand to our feet this morning. <laughs>